more beneficial. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. International conferences, training and workshops at its headquarters in Vienna are one of the many tools used by the International Atomic Energy Agency to help protect people and the environment from the effects of ionizing radiation. This is an important job because while of course this radiation is hazardous, it also brings great benefits to humankind all around the world. This film is being provided by the IAEA and made for its member states. It's about the standards that the IAEA sets for radiation safety in coordination with other relevant international organizations. The application of those standards and the many important ways in which the IAEA helps member states protect people and the environment from this valuable yet hazardous resource. Ionizing radiation is radiation that carries enough energy to free electrons from atoms or molecules, thereby ionizing them. It is a naturally occurring phenomenon to which everyone is exposed from sources like cosmic rays and naturally occurring terrestrial radioactive materials routinely found in coal and other commodities. Many of us are also exposed to artificial sources of radiation, most importantly in medicine. Essentially we cannot avoid, because we are human beings, being exposed to radiation. It is because of its ability to penetrate materials that this radiation is hazardous. It can damage living cells in plants, animals and people. It can kill them and it can cause cancer. If we take the average radiation levels we're all exposed to, if we were to get a radiation dose a few hundred times higher and get it all at once, then the effects are pretty serious. There can be skin burns, vomiting, the immune system will break down, and in extreme situations that leads to death. It is for these reasons that the International Atomic Energy Agency was set up in 1957. Although the work of the agency takes many forms, three key elements of its mandate are facilitating and servicing international conventions, the development of standards and providing for the application of standards. First, standards. The IAEA safety standards provide a system of safety fundamentals, safety requirements and safety guides for ensuring safety. There is a statutory obligation for IEA to develop the standards for protection of people and the environment from harmful effects of ionizing radiation. As such, IEA is pursuing, in cooperation with member states, with experts from member states, and with other international organizations in the field, to setting these standards. These standards are the bedrock of the agency's work. The International Basic Safety Standards is one of the flagship documents of the IAEA. It's used by many regulatory authorities and governments as the basis of their national legislation for radiation protection. Yet in many respects, the agency's work with member states in getting these standards actually applied is even more important. In addition to the statutory obligation to prepare the standards, I would see seen is it even more important to provide for application because standard is basically book or electronic file, which if it is not applied in the practice, has no effect. We're a member of the United Nations family and we're set up as the um, world's atoms for peace. Although everyone in the world is exposed to ionizing radiation, the IAEA draws a distinction between three groups of people to whom these standards and their application is important. Workers are those whose jobs could expose them to significant levels of radiation, for instance in nuclear power plants. Radiation is widely used in medicine for both diagnostic and therapeutic purposes, so patients also need protection. The public needs to be protected from the hazards of both naturally occurring radioactivity and from artificial sources 
like radioactive waste and the radioactive materials used in medical facilities and installations including nuclear power plants. To all these groups, the existence of the IEA safety standards are important. Their application, though, is absolutely vital. Here, the work of the IAEA takes many forms. One of these is technical cooperation. We are actually sending our experts to help member states to set up certain practice, certain industrial setting, medical setting and so on. And they are advising and bringing the upfront knowledge, worldwide knowledge from the international point of view, to be adopted in their practical practice. Another is bilateral cooperation. Uh, IAEA have uh, many technical meetings and they provided many useful publications to us in Korean radiologists and bureaucrats. Another increasingly useful tool is the outreach material that is so easy to distribute in the digital age. The RPOP uh, website, it's a very nice, well-designed website and utilized by many Egyptians right now. Uh, they provided us the, um, many uh, publications and slabs or posters for education and training for, for us. Another form of assistance to member states is this sort of meeting hosted by the IAEA in Vienna to explore the justification of medical imaging. Although this conference is on the uses of radiation in medicine, similar conferences are held on the uses in other fields for which the IAEA is responsible. These include naturally occurring radioactive materials. The IAEA uh, is a cooperator for the International Symposium on Law. The annually organized meetings unifying participants from national and international bodies and expert from industrial and uh, research. Meetings of this nature make a distinct contribution to the successful application of the standards, but they also enable participants to establish professional networks of considerable value, both to themselves and to the cause of radiation safety. There are other organizations working with radiation protection, but actually, I see the IAEA is unique in the way they are getting the professionals together, the way of sharing experience and knowledge and networking. This is not, could not be achieved except through the IAEA. Courses and fellowships run or sponsored by the IAEA act in a similar way. Arising from these fellowships and from courses, the agency does courses or uh, organizes or contributes to courses around the world in the developing world and in the developed world on almost any aspect of radiation protection you can think of. And the net outcome of both fellowships and these courses is that often young people or people who work in isolation in their own country uh, form a network that supports their professional life for as long as their professional life lasts. Yet another aspect of the agency's radiation safety services are those provided by its own laboratories in the Vienna International Center. The IAEA contributes to the radiation safety through providing dosimetry services throughout the world. We provide services for our staff members here uh, while they're here and also while they go on duty travels throughout the world. We also provide dosimetry services for activities that the IAEA sponsors. And in these laboratories we provide two separate services. That is for internal dosimetry as well as external dosimetry. In external dosimetry allows for a dosimeter to be worn on a person and we measure their radiation exposure from external sources. We also can measure people for internal intakes. If they have potentially been exposed to radioactive material and had an intake, we can measure their whole body. With the IAEA reaching its 60th anniversary, it is certainly time to reflect on what has been achieved in terms of radiation safety, especially since the beginning of the 21st century.
Yet it is also time to reflect on the challenges ahead in radiation safety and radiation protection in our increasingly globalized world. That radiation does not recognize borders. If you have a situation like the accidental, incidental situation, or you are just simple trade set and materials which are having radiation sources in it, you need to ensure that people on one side of the border are protected on the, the same level on the other side of the border. So in the legislation should be to the extent possible the same. And this is the role of the IEA, to set up the standards, to advise member states to adopt in the legislation, and if they adopt, they have the same level across all world. As this film has shown, the work of the IAEA in setting standards and in helping member states apply those standards takes many, many forms. With new ways of using this remarkable resource of ionizing radiation constantly being devised, the IAEA's work in maintaining and enhancing radiation safety continues. <laughs>